welcome. We are back now with another episode of For the Love of Star Wars to bring in another great guest to talk about a beloved piece of Star Wars media. Our guest tonight, joining us on the channel for the very first time, it's GeForce. Welcome, GeForce. How are you? How are you doing? Hello, how are you guys? Good, thanks. Good. How are you? Good. Doing well, doing well. Good. Brilliant stuff. Excited to be here. Excited to have you, yes. Uh, especially to talk about this episode that you've chosen tonight, uh, which is season five of The Clone Wars, episode 19, uh, To Catch a Jedi. This is the third episode in a four-part arc to see out season five. Uh, I'll go straight into my facts, shall I? This is written by Charles Murray, who has written eight Clone Wars episodes, two Rebels episodes, which were The Path of the Jedi and Rebel Resolve, if for anyone that's interested. And he also wrote the episode Choices, which was the third episode in Tales of the Jedi. Uh, this was directed by Kyle Dunleavy, who's directed a couple of shorts, but mainly Clone Wars. He's done 22 episodes. Uh, this episode received an IMDb rating of 9.0. So it's a pretty, pretty high rating there. Uh, before we get into it, do we want to try and do this episode without giving away the identity of the person who's framing Ahsoka as that's not revealed until the following episode? Do you not that's think we could do that? You... <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. All right. Okay, GeForce then. Uh, what is it that you love about this episode? Well, the thing that initially strikes me with this episode is I love Asajj Ventress. She is one of my favorite characters. Um, I bought the Mythos statue just because it's her and she looks so sinister in mm. that that arc of, of art that they did with that. Um, but uh, besides that, you still have the storyline going where you have someone framing Ahsoka in from what she's saying to everyone and to the council. And um, she has to look for this person that's framing her as well as we, as we see further down the episode, get help from unlikely sources. Yeah. So I, I think it has a nice mix of like intrigue and, like i don't want to say espionage but you know like that cd underground where you have to dig up this information to mm. clear your name type of episode yeah. and and i love it so in my uh, what i enjoy about this episode of on my notes i've put the espionage element so I, you know i would say there's definitely espionage okay. to it okay. um, <laughs> yeah uh, but i completely agree like i've been watching quite a bit of uh, clone wars recently partly due to this series that we're doing but Ventress is brilliant. I really enjoy Ventress's character. It's really she's good. She's been a night sister. She's been a, a a Sith apprentice for Dooku. She's been a bounty hunter now mm, in this yeah. episode. Like like she's taken on so many levels. And I know there's another storyline that I I'm not as familiar with, but she has a love interest in um the comics, I wanna say. Yeah, okay. that's right. It is. Yeah. And, Quinlan, um, Quinlan Voss, isn't it? That's it. That's it. Oh. Thank you, Martin. And um, that's another tragic story that happens in that arc. And like, she's just a very interesting character for mm. me. Mm. Yeah, Martin. Yeah, well, I have to say, GOG Force is spot on. There is a, definitely a, an element of espionage in this. And I think um, from the end of the previous episode, where you see her jump off the out of the pipe down to, you know, section 13, 13 or whatever, level 13, 13. Um, and then this whole episode is about her trying to prove her innocence somehow. Mm. And, it, it, you know, it's definitely taken from the fugitive, isn't it? Dr. Richard oh, Kimball. Yeah. It, I mean, it's, 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 you know, it's absolutely an inspiration for this episode. So I think, yeah, you're absolutely spot on. Um, this episode has got, so much about it this arc in general is is i said to g-force before we hit the record button it's my favorite arc in the clone wars um and there's a lot of lot of good ones but this is mm. my favorite um there's we'll go into more detail but yeah i mean there's so much as a star wars fan and and so much um information in this episode that when you read up about it um, I, I was absolutely blown away by some of the facts you know that i read about this episode so yeah i'm really looking forward to getting into it 
Okay, yeah. good. Um, well, before we do your favourite scenes, then Martin, let's let's go to our guest first. So, <laughs> favourite scenes, character, or piece of dialogue? Well, you've mentioned Ventress uh, as a character, but um, the opening scroll, if you will, for a, a Clone Wars episode, it says the quote is never become desperate enough to trust the unworthy. And I'm just like, okay, that, that just lures you right in. You're already biting on the lure, you know, and like, Oh, what is this about? And, um, <clears throat> one of the favorite things that I liked in this episode, barred action scenes where you have great lightsaber duels or things like that was, um, the exchange between Ahsoka and Asajj and Asajj says, in what star system do you think that I'd help you? Mm. And I was just like, she is putting a lot of trust into a character that she knows is not trustworthy. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. those two tying together, I, I just like that kind of solidifies you into the rest of the episode no matter what i think mine is is probably the fact that you you've got ahsoka being framed and then towards the end ventress is being framed as well you know the way i mean i, I don't yeah i don't want to uh give away the person martin i feel like if people haven't watched this then it's a bit so i was just <laughs> going to say the non-ventress at the end is um you know is going in and framing Ventress, but uh, yeah, I really enjoyed that, and the obviously the battle between Ahsoka and non Ventress is uh, yep. is 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 really good. Yeah, really, really interesting, yes. really entertaining. That is a great lightsaber battle. Mm. Yeah, but not not only that, the the way they use the Force within it as well is yeah, it's really 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 good. Uh, Martin, yep. a favorite scene of yours? Well, first of all, now I'm under absolute massive pressure not to mention <laughs> this person's name by accident, so I'm going to try my best. Um, okay, there's plenty of great scenes in this episode. Um, I'll, I'll list a few, but then I'll give my favorite at the end. I think you're right. The lightsaber battle is spectacular, but also the hand to hand combat. There's a hand to hand combat fight as well. And the choreography in that is absolutely spectacular. Um, remembering that this is an animated show, it, yeah, you right. know, you you can really see that they've worked out, you know, what what um, appendage would be here if you punched the person there. You know, it's, it looks seamless. It's absolutely brilliant. Um, uh, it's always great to see Commander Wolf and um, Master Plo last Master Plo Koon, sorry, I, mm. I, they're two of my favorite characters in the Clone Wars, and uh, any opportunity to see them in action, but it's the opening scene to the entire episode and um, it starts off with a, a low shot of the Jedi temple and above the Jedi, Jedi temple there's a thunderstorm going on and I thought this is quite apt because obviously there's an actual thunderstorm and, and a metaphorical thunderstorm going sure. on um, in the galaxy and around the Jedi at that time mm. and I found I found it fascinating watching that scene because you you see these Jedi and for the first time really I've ever seen them they all they all look absolutely devastated and they're downbeat and they can't understand what's happening and some of them actually believe ahsoka has done this and mm. and yeah. then then you have the hologram of tarkin speaking to them like they're nothing and how he's in control of the situation and how um it, it's a military matter and not a jedi matter and how they've been made to look small now in the galaxy and and i thought i just thought and and I'll, and I'll always praise darth sidious and here's another example of his plan he this is another example of how darth sidious has managed to turn the people against the jedi by yeah. making making them look like um an organization where one of their own has uh you know, betrayed them and, and started killing people. And if you think about it, that doesn't sound too dissimilar to another show we had recently. Um, so, you know, I would just, I would just like to say, you know, that, that scene really is just a fantastic scene and it's not action packed, but it's just a great dialogue scene and tells you a lot about the state of the galaxy and, and what's happening in the prequels in general. So that would be probably be my choice. Very good. Yeah. So, That's I mean, this this does do quite a bit. Like, how do you sort of perceive the Jedi Order at the, like after this episode? Because things things change quite dramatically, don't they, for the Jedi 
Uh, is is this the turning point? Do you think? Um, <laughs> I think there's a bigger, bigger turning point down the line. But um, I think this was an eye-opening part of the the Jedi Order for me, maybe because I, as a seventy-seven kid, you know, growing up with this and watching it in theaters, Star Wars for me. I had no idea of Vader's arc or Anakin and any of that. I, I had to watch it as it came out, you know? And oh, yeah. Um, so that to me is always going to be like the biggest wow moment that you could have in, in a Star Wars thing. But the Grey Jedi was something that we didn't really, unless you had read the books. I don't think you would know anything about that mm. based on the, the the film anyway. Um, so uh, I I personally like it because it does question and um, it goes back to uh, Palpatine's line where he's like the dogmatic view of the Jedi and, and this and that, you know, like any religion or whatever type of belief system that you you may have could always be flawed you know so mm -hmm. I, I did appreciate that arc of it and and ahsoka being wise enough to say look this isn't for me i know i i like what you preach but there's certain aspects that mm -hmm. i can't get on board with and i want to go my own way yeah and and that takes a lot of guts i think so mm -hmm. I I enjoy that line of Ahsoka's travel. So yeah, absolutely. Yeah, well, yeah, I agree. Again, I agree with G Force. Um, I think this this isn't the the actual turning point, but I think it's just another um, run on the ladder that um, has been set up for them to fail. Um, I mean, I don't suppose you could actually blame Sidious for the actual situation that's happening at the moment, mm. but you can blame him for the the person that's doing this in the background is, is is doing it because of what the Jedi have become because of Sidious. So, you know, I think, I think it's definitely a run on the ladder and, um, it, you know, it's, there's not much, le much left, uh, much longer left in terms of timeline until revenge of the Sith, as we get to this point in the series. Mm. So I think, uh, I think, um, you know, just as I say at the beginning, we see that, Axel and metaphorical thunderstorm over the Jedi Temple. I, I think that was that's done on purpose. It, you know, just to show that um, the dark side, the shroud of the dark side, has fallen, if you like, um, yeah. as Yoda says. So, do you think yeah. that was a baloney call, or do you think that was an artist's interpretation that that just slipped in that thunderstorm as kind of like an Easter egg? Yeah. Well, I I, I actually would I would argue that may even be a George um, thing. Um, to be honest with you, because he loves that sort of thing, doesn't he? Sure. he you know, you, you have that scene where in Revenge of the Sith, where Sidious is coming back with the bo with the burnt body of Darth Vader, and for the first time in all of the movies, you've seen Coruscant um, have a thunderstorm, <laughs> and lightning strikes everywhere, yep, and it's yep. one of my favourite scenes in Revenge of the Sith. Just that scene because of what's going on, and and that to me says it could be a George, but it could be mm. Dave interpretation of something george has done. So, yep. yeah yeah so how, how much yep. involvement did george lucas have at this point did he still like oversee well, a lot of this or well from what i understand and when you watch the documentaries i think he he would they would come to him with story ideas and he'd sign off on the story ideas and then they would go off and do it he would also at the beginning of every um, writer's meeting he'd have his own stories that he wanted to be put into the clone wars and then they would go away and they would write them and then i think there would be like as you do in any form of business i suppose you'd have monthly meetings and they'd sort of discuss where each episode was getting to along the line i don't think his involvement was very big let's mm. put it that way but like i think when it came to the type consult of. yeah exactly g-force yeah but i think when it came to big decisions about characters i think he probably would have had say in all of those yeah. i don't think any, they i don't think dave filoni would have dared do something with say obi-wan or anakin or sidious without going to george and saying yeah <laughs> but um shame it's not like that anymore 
<laughs> well, that's not what we're here for, Martin. So, uh, <laughs> moving on. Um, <laughs> so, uh, with uh, Ahsoka's character in this, like, how do you feel? Like, how do you perceive her throughout this sort of arc, if you like? Because do, do we kind of sort of see her lose hope, don't we? In the, in yeah. the Jedi at this. Look, I, I'm having a hard time because I'm, I, this is <laughs> like hindsight now that I'm, yeah, I yeah. might be speaking with, but I mean, she kind of knew that, how do I phrase it? Like her upbringing seemed to be very natural and like they even tried to show it in um, some of those shorts that they did where like mm. she was with the animals and things like that. Like it seemed like it was a more one with nature way of the force with Ahsoka always. And mm. once she started training and had to become a warrior and that first and foremost, I know that kind of pushed her away initially just from, for that reason. Like, mm this isn't what I signed up for kind of thing. And then to have one of your own frame you and try to accuse you and no one believes you, but your master, you know, and I mean, the, the psychological pulls and pushes that she had to go through and in this art were, were really pretty incredible. And I thought they captured it very well because i mean yeah. any one of us with those types of pressures would probably break down and just sob our asses up, you know? <laughs> it's a good bit of fantasy for sure it's it is this the trials like did do i mean you always hear with the force and everything like destiny will choose your path or you know you can't escape your destiny and like are these trials like when they come to this type of a head, is that what when you triumph then is that what makes mm -hmm. you a Jedi master? Like how do, or do they have their own little tests that they set up? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Kind of makes you think it could be loosely done. So Obi Wan has to face Vader and that's his trial and Yeah. Comes back, he's a master. I don't know. Yeah, I, I think I think that's I think this is definitely Ahsoka's trial. I think even Mace Windu mentions it in the next episode um, at the Jedi Temple. You know, this was your great trial. Yeah. Um, yes. Um, yes. So I think I think you're 100 percent right, and I I, I think um, I think normally in in the old way of the Jedi, from say the Phantom Menace type era, I think it's mentioned that there's actually a trial. You know, there's actually a, a I don't know, an assault course or something, I don't know, um, that the yeah. Jedi have to go through. But yeah. there are certain Jedi who go through situations, as you say, G Force. I think, you know, I think Yoda even says in M in a Jedi, doesn't he? Um, you I won't be a Jedi until you face your father. So the trials are kind of up in the air, really, and it's whether you, yeah. it's a great test to you. Um but in terms of Ahsoka, I think I think um you you, you touched on something there you can definitely tell in with her facial expressions in this episode that uh, she's she's given up hope um of not only the jedi but i think just the galaxy in general i think she's just she she's gone from being this lauded padawan learner from probably the greatest jedi master in the jedi um and all of a sudden she, they've just dropped her um mm. and even she can even see the anakin's having second thoughts about yeah. whether you know she he's she's guilty or not and uh you know without giving anything away in the next episode after this one um you know you you you're not surprised she does what she does but yeah. at the same time it's kind of heartbreaking having watched her progression as a character throughout this and then this is this these this these four episodes or this episode you've chosen but the four episodes as an arc g force they're probably the most pivotal point in her story, in her story. maybe in her whole of her story but at least to the point where we knew her as a character and um and i think this episode particularly is is quite a lot of heavy lifting 
in terms of her mentally and psychologically about how she becomes the person we see in latter series and say the rebel say rebels and yeah. the ahsoka show um so it's quite a pivotal episode in her character i think and like you said earlier the trial is both metaphorical and literal because she is on trial and yes, she's mm, facing yeah. her trials so like that's great it, it's very cleverly woven mm. <laughs> Yeah, no, yeah, brilliant. I didn't think to see that. Yeah, that's really good. Yeah, absolutely. Definitely. What did you make of like the animation throughout this or in this particular episode? Because uh, do, you, do you feel like it's much different to previous episodes? They, I mean, in terms of comparison to series one and series five, there's a bit of a difference, but I, yeah, they're the early series. Su- seasons obviously of clone wars there was definitely a difference in the animation but being an artist i love clone wars and rebels animation just Mm. is the spot on stuff for me for star wars um and rebels is even a little different like their style of Mm. animation but i i still i love it it comes across in Maybe it's the stories. I don't know. But like sometimes you forget you're watching animation at at a point. You're just like watching Star Wars and you don't even think about it. So I think that's kudos to all those artists because I I just love it. Yeah, I agree. I think um, when I'm watching The Clone Wars, sometimes I don't feel like I'm watching animation. I just feel like I'm watching an extension of the prequels and the characters that I'm watching are those characters from the prequels. I don't differentiate between the two i think uh, right. they do an absolute bang up job and mm. i think every season um they just up their game and it gets better and better and i mean the lightsaber duels going back to those in this episode yeah. you can tell with each season that goes by they just get better and, and, polish, better, and better polishing it more yeah and really yeah polished. and yeah definitely. yeah and the, i mean like you said the well you almost touched upon it the voice acting in this as well you know, the the you wouldn't feel like they're different voice actors to who, you know, to Hayden Christensen or Ewan McGregor, and in terms of Obi Wan and uh, Anakin, it's it is quite uh, quite impressive. They've done a very good job, haven't they? They've chosen well. Yeah, can't deny yeah. that. Good. Uh, how do you think this uh, episode impacts the series as a whole? Then we've said like how it's a pivotal turning point for Ahsoka. But um, it it is pretty impactful because you, with this arc, you get to see her have to venture on her own, um, and in that, you're going to have the effect of Anakin no longer has a, pod, a padawan, mm. and the effects that may have or may not have had on his storyline from there. Yeah. Um, so I think I think it's a pretty big twist in the story Mm. Um, in in possibly the entire timeline throughout you know what we get to see on tv do you think we kind of obviously she's not really around but do you think we kind of miss ahsoka from the movies do you feel like she would have made a good addition to the films it it would have to be Dependent on when she was inserted into the timeline, obviously. Yeah. Um, I did enjoy Ahsoka. Um, I, the story wasn't the strongest, but I thought what they tried to do with it, I thought was was decent enough. And I thought the acting with Rosario and um, Balin and Shin was yeah. awesome. Um, everybody like, you know, oh, she's always pouting. She's supposed to be this wise person now. She's not, the, yeah. she's not snips anymore, you know? Yeah. So I, I don't know. I, to each their own. You, with these new shows, it's, it's very hard to, to put your opinion out there and not have mm. others come at you with it. But I mean, yeah. if you like it, you like it. If you don't, you don't. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. Something to add there, Martin. Have you got, Anything well, about? I was just going to say, well, yeah, I mean, um, I think I, I, I love Ahsoka, um, the character. I think when I, she first 
came on our screens. I, I wasn't a huge fan, but by the end of the Clone Wars, she is definitely in my top 10 to even, perhaps even top five favorite Star Wars characters of all time. I think she's an absolutely fantastic character. And what and it just goes to show what you can do when you've got a long time to, to do storytelling with a TV mm. show. That being said, I am very glad that she wasn't in the movies because if you add another main character into those movies, it dilutes what they're trying to do in terms mm. of show the fall of Anakin Skywalker. I think by having her just in the Clone Wars, it gives you another reason for him to have the fall that he does when he he you know becomes Darth Vader. Yeah. Whereas if you have him have her in the in say Revenge of the Sith, you, you, that film would be just so bloated. I mean, it's bloated film as yeah. it is. There's a lot going yeah. on in that film. If you had another yeah. main character in there that you had to do something with, it it it, it, it would in, irreparably destroy or not destroy, but damage the film. I think so. Mm. I'm really happy that we yeah. get Ahsoka. Really happy, but. I'm glad we don't get her in the movies. Yeah. Yeah. No, I wonder if we could have done like a, a fade out transition from Attack of the Clones into the Clone Wars ending yeah. where Vader's just standing over the Oh, the that's so good. That's so good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. Just a quick scene, just a tease. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Right, so uh, final question then, G-Force. What makes this sure. feel like Star Wars to you? Lightsaber fights always help. Um, always, yeah. <laughs> always. Uh, there wasn't a lot of um, spaceship fights or anything like that. No. So um, I really think it, it is the dynamic of you're at the end of your rope and you have to try to trust an untrustworthy source going back to the, the lead in line, mm. you know, to help you get out of a jam. And, and that's always a very difficult situation for anyone to try to overcome. Um, you can't, fully trust this person you don't fully trust this person but yet you have to fight alongside with them in certain situations um I, that really is something that i i just i don't know it speaks to me for some reason like mm. we've never really seen a lot of that where you've had to go across enemy lines to to help you get to mm. something and they were willing to do it as well you know so that put another arc onto ventress for me like is there some good in ventress like how mm. why would she do this you know she could just turn her in and get the bounty yeah and and mm. it just raised certain questions with me i thought the storytelling was well done i thought the animation was fantastic all the lightsaber duels um mm -hmm. They they were just great. This yeah. this whole four story arc. Yeah, we've got to agree. Yeah, great lightsaber battles. The suspense. There's darkness. The underworld of Coruscant. You know, the it sort of shows a few elements of Attack of the Clones in there, doesn't it? So always always good to see that. But uh, yeah, Martin. Yeah, um, I agree with everything you said. Um, the 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 fact that they used. Um, Sort of the underworld of Coruscant, um, they did actually use it for a reason. It's um, they use section uh, or level thirteen thirteen, and there was actually originally a video game called uh, Star Wars thirteen thirteen, which was going to be mm -hmm. the story of Boba Fett, and um, they did this episode in conjunction with that, so people would be aware of what it was before the game came out. But then the game got cancelled, so I thought that was a nice, that was a cool little. Um, you know, nugget of information that I read about yeah. when I was researching this episode. It's a um, Black Series channel on YouTube called 1313. Oh, well. okay. Oh, cool. Okay, I didn't know that. Okay, yeah. Yep. So check them out um, if you get Black Series. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, but yeah, no, I I thought it was a great episode. Um, it, it, it It's that whole thing about the Clone Wars that I really like. It's that there's that lingering shadow over everything, and mm. uh, you're you're seeing the drip drip fall of the the Republic, and but at the same time you're getting some great character 
development for the characters that you've come to love in the show. Um, yeah, again, anybody who hasn't seen this, or anyone who hasn't seen The Clone Wars, what you're playing at, but if you do want to watch um, four fantastic episodes, watch the arc that this episode that we're talking about is included in, because it's it's an amazing, amazing bit of storytelling. And uh, I think anyone who, anyone, even if you just got a passing interest in Star Wars, I think you'd really enjoy these episodes because there's it's got everything you'd ever want in yeah. Star Wars in it. It's a great, great choice, G-Force. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. So that's uh, for the entire arc. That's season five, episode 17, 18, 19, and 20. But yeah, that particular episode was brilliant, and I was glad to have watched it again. Uh, so thank you for picking that one. And thanks for coming on to talk about it, GeForce. That was well, thank you, guys. I, great I get to watch it again as well. So <laughs> Even better, yeah. Uh, where can people yep. find your stuff, your channel? Oh, GeForce Racing 20 on the, all of them, pretty much. <laughs> cool, cool. Yeah, so, we'll, um, um, we'll pop that down in the description. Yeah, I don't have anything really coming up but Toy Hunt, so I got a couple in the can we'll be putting out in the next week or so, but nothing nice. nothing in it. So. Good stuff, good awesome. stuff. We Go watch these boys. That. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so thank you. Um, yeah, please comment uh, below with your thoughts on this episode or arc, if you've watched the arc. Um, like and subscribe. I'm off to find out who framed Ahsoka. I already know the answer. But thanks for watching. <laughs> we'll catch you in the next one. <laughs> 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 I'll cut that bit out. <laughs> <laughs>